This is a video on sprockets, their general use, and some detailed information about them. There are many varieties of sprockets, but generally there are two types or two categories. And these two categories are drive sprockets and idler sprockets. There are also different sizes of sprockets. This is a number 25, which has a quarter inch pitch. And this is a number 40, which has a half inch pitch. The smaller sprockets or the quarter inch um, pitch sprockets are used in uh, applications that have low torque. The larger sprockets like these would be in a high torque situation so that you could chain that really needs to have the strength to hold up under a lot of uh, stress and tension. Drive sprockets generally will be connected to a, a motor shaft or a shaft that has some uh, translation to a motor. Let's say maybe a shaft that is coupled to a motor because maybe this has to go in another location. Um, but generally, this is used on, um, on a motor and it will drive the, the mechanics. The idler sprocket is only a positioner. And the, the idler sprockets, uh, what they'll do is they'll take the chain and they'll position the chain in a way that the chain is held stably. The uses for sprockets range from drive trains and transmissions uh, to couplings to mechanical um, gearing reduction and or leverage and in cases for of timing you've probably seen sprockets used on mechanics of let's say bicycles or motorcycles you've also probably seen them in conveyor systems there are many different configurations you can apply to sprockets you can have the chain in a line and it could be uh, pinned from one side to the other, having the chain pin on either side of the machine, not in a loop. And the drive sprocket would be placed in some kind of configuration like this, where you have the idler sprocket being positioned so that the drive sprocket has the chain going all the way around most of its sprockets. When the drive sprocket turns in either direction, it'll move the assembly that's connected to this drive sprocket. So if I move it like this, you'll see that it's moving. Or you can have it in a configuration where it is in a loop and your drive sprocket is moving something that may be connected to one of the links. When it turns, the idler sprocket is just idling and the drive sprocket is being turned by a motor and the motor can turn in either direction and move whatever is on one of the links. You can also use chain or a configuration that allows you to either reduce the gearing, increase the torque, even in timing situations where you need something to turn at a slower rate than the motor is, or something turning at a faster rate than the motor. In this type of configuration, you'd probably be using two drive sprockets. One would be connected to a motor, and the other one would be connected to the thing that it's trying to turn. Uh, this would be, a, a good example would be in a, let's say a lathe or a, an indexing fourth axis for a CNC machine, where the motor is turning at a specified distance, and the, you want to increase the resolution, you do that by putting a small uh, drive sprocket in a configura configuration like this onto a larger drive sprocket. Mo in most cases, you'd have drive sprockets that are much larger than this. In all sprockets, you'll have what are called teeth. You'll have an inside diameter, and you'll generally, sometimes, sometimes you'll have a, a hub diameter. In the case of idler sprockets, you, uh, it may not come with a hub. It generally comes with a bearing inside, but you can also use a drive sprocket to create an idler sprocket just by putting a shaft and putting a bearing on either side and it, or a freewheel. The finished bore uh, types of sprockets will generally have a bore that is a, of a specific size ready to mount on a shaft or, or whatever you're going to be mounting it on. And it will have set screws to be able to tighten against the shaft that's within the bore. Each tooth of the sprocket is actually uh, quite special. It has a circle for where the where a pin of a chain will enter into the sprocket. It has another circle for the other part of the, um, the link and it will generally have a circle that forms the actual tooth. And it just starts all over again with the next tooth and the next tooth. And these circles are really important. In some sprockets you'll see that they're, the tip of this is cut off. You really don't need that much of uh, the tooth. Uh, so in some cases they actually just remove a piece of it. But you'll have this circle here forming this part of the tooth 
to be able to enter and exit out of the chain. The pitch is measured from the center point of the pins inside of the sprocket that, that would rest inside the sprocket. And this would form what is called a pitch circle or a circle that, that follows this, um, the center points all the way around the, the sprocket. This pitch circle would have a circumference and it would also have a diameter. And the circumference is simply the pitch times the number of teeth. So if you have a pitch of 0.25, you can multiply it by, let's say we have a nine tooth, a nine tooth sprocket, and you would have 2.25 inches circumference. In most scenarios, the idler sprocket doesn't really matter how many teeth you have around the idler sprocket. Really, this is a selection for how you're going to be applying your mechanics in whatever you're designing. But generally, it's just a free wheel. And if you are in, if you're in a tight space, you may want a smaller sprocket. But the number of teeth isn't really going to determine a, a ratio of any kind unless you have a much more complex um, configuration. When creating your configuration and the design that you're, you desire, when creating a configuration for sprockets and chain, you want to make sure that the, the drive sprocket is covered around the sprockets as much as possible. And this, of course, is um, established with uh, the use of a, an idler. So it can, it can, you can have an idler, let's say, you can have an idler positioned like so. And you can see that the, the drive sprocket is covered by most of its teeth. And what this is going to do is it's, it's going to reduce the wear. And it's also going to make the application much more accurate because you have many more pins um, that is uh, uh, maintaining a good hold to each one of the seats for these pins. And the more you have, the, the more accurate your system is going to be. If you had a system like this, then only about maybe two or three of your sprockets or one, one or two of the, of the pins is actually being held into the sprocket. And you're not gonna get as, you're gonna get more wear on the actual sprocket itself. And you're going to have, um, you're gonna be hurt by uh, the possible inaccuracies between only two or three pins. Whereas when you have it all the way covered, you're sort of averaging all of that um, possible inaccuracy around the chain. Another important consideration is to make sure that the uh, the alignment with the idler and the sprocket is right in line with each other or you're going to get um, an effect where the the sprockets are going to hit the chain in a way that it's going to make a, a sound but it can also produce harmonics into the, the machine that you're designing. Common formulas associated with um, sprockets are circumference which would be equal to the pitch times the number of teeth. If you need to find the diameter or the radius to this pitch circle, then you can find that out by using the circumference, actually converting from the circumference. So circumference is equal to 2 pi r. r is also equal to diameter divided by 2. So circumference is equal to 2 pi diameter over 2. So now we have circumference over 2 pi is equal to the diameter over 2. We can take the 2 out and multiply it by 2 on the side. So the diameter is equal to 2 times the quantity of the circumference over 2 pi. If you're using sprockets with stepping motors, then we can find steps per inch. And this equals the number of steps per revolution for a stepping motor. This is generally 200. Uh, typically, the stepping motors that are used in, in uh, most of the industry is 200 steps per inch for DIY CNC machines and, and so forth. Multiply this by the micro steps. Not the division of micro steps, but the, the like if it's uh, 1 16th, this would be 16. And this would be over uh, the circumference, which is the pitch times the teeth. For instance, if you have a stepping motor that has 200 steps per revolution and you're going to be running at 16 micro steps per step, the pitch is 0.25 inches, which is what this would be, and this would be 14 uh, teeth. So this would be 3200 over 3.5 inches, which yields 914.29 steps, which is this over here, steps 
per inch, which is over on the bottom. 